Howdy howdy, this is Mr. Potter. In our previous video, we talked about how to create the different parts of a load balancing situation. The idea is that we're going to have requests, we're going to have web servers, and we're going to have a load balancer that kind of runs the whole show. So what we're going to do today is we're actually going to write the code that's going to create this load balancer for us. So we're back here and we're going to create a load balancer main. .cpp. All right, so the main idea with what we're doing today is that I'm going to have to create all of these parts that work. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to talk about how do I create a request. I'm going to have to talk about uh, setting up some type of random number generator. And I'm going to have to set up an array of web servers. And this array of web servers, this is very much like how it's actually done in the real world, where you'll have a wall full of web servers. And the web servers, we usually have some type of identify, identifying name, but the name will also involve a number, some type of numbering algorithm, so that all the web servers can be addressed in sequence. And then we're going to have to have some type of loop where we're going to uh, check each web server for uh, if it's done. And if it's done, then give it a new request. So the thing is, these creating the requests, we're actually going to have to uh, start off with a full queue. Now, of course, we never will have a full queue. Remember that our array queue will double in size when it's no longer big enough to hold everything. But I'm going to start off with a certain number of requests in my queue, and we're going to be processing those. And then, of course, um, the reason we need this random number generator is that every random amount of time we get a new request. So that's what we're going to be doing in this model. Keep in mind that I'm not actually going to be sending any data across the internet. I'm going to be creating random pieces of data. Now in order for this to work the way that I want, I'm definitely going to have to include uh, request.cpp I'm going to have to include web server.cpp and I'm going to have to include uh, load balancer .h and we're definitely going to be using namespace standard and if I'm going to be outputting to the screen of course I need to include IO stream if I'm going to be doing random numbers, then we've talked about this before, how I had to include uh, C time in order to get time to work with this. And I also need to include uh, C S T D L I B. This is going to get us access to RAND and S RAND. And we'll, we'll remind ourselves what those are in just a bit. And there's one other file that we're going to do. We're going to include something called S stream. This is string stream, and this is going to allow us to build strings out of different parts, much easier than concatenation. So this is what we're going to be including at the top of our uh, program. And I'm going to have a constant here. I'm going to have this num web servers, and I'm going to go ahead and set it to five. So rather than having a fixed number, we're always going to be referring back to this constant as to how many of each of these things we have. So this is the start. Now we need to create a request. So we need some type of function, uh, create random request, that's going to have to be able to create a random request for us whenever we want one. So I am going to create two string stream variables. So string stream uh, IPS and IPD. So this is going to be our source and our destination. 
and we're going to be creating a request called R. And this is the request that we're going to be returning. So what I need to do is I need to build an input stream and a destination stream that's going to be put into here. So with IPS, the nice thing that I can do is that I can just direct stuff to it. So I can say, hey, give me a random number between 0 and and 255. Keep in mind that because I'm using this modular arithmetic, the remainder when I divide by 256 is always going to be between 0 and 255. And if you're familiar with IP addresses, IP addresses, especially the IPv4, are always an octet of uh, 255 possibilities dot 255 possibilities dot 255 possibilities dot 255 possibilities. So that's what I'm building here. Then a dot and then another random number mod 256 and then another dot and then another random number mod 256 and then my last dot and then my last octet. Now, what the string stream does is this class actually allows me to use the insertion operator as if it were a C out or as if it were a file stream. So I can actually build a string by using this insertion operator rather than concatenation. And so it actually allows us to build these uh, very nicely. Now I want to do the same thing with my destination IP. So I'm going to go ahead and call this IPD. So it's going to be random four sets of 0 to 255s, random set of four 0 to 255s. Those are my input domain and my uh, my destination IP. And then I need to create a uh, string out of these. So I'm going to say r dot source is going to get IPS.string. And that's going to actually get the string out of that string string. And I can do the same thing for destination if I get it from IPD. And then I need to create the random amount of time. So I'm going to say that r.processTime is going to get uh, that same random number mod. Uh, 500. So it could take up to 500 units of time to actually process this web page. And then when I'm done, I want to return R. So explaining what I'm doing here in this creating a random request, I'm creating two variables, IPS and IPD, that allow me to do my source and destination IPs. And then I actually create those as strings and assign them to a request object that I've created. I assign how long it takes for that object to be created, and then I return R. When I'm dealing with structs, structs are always going to fill everything with zero or with null, if they're memory locations, if they're objects, if they're pointers. So I actually need to assign all of those parameters before I give that to, well, whoever's calling it. So this is my uh, create random request function, and this is going to create a request and return it. Now, in my main, in order to have this random number generator, I actually need to create a random number generator. So let me get rid of this close brace because I really do want these comments in line. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. So I have my uh, random number generator here. So in order to do this, I need to create uh, seed random at time sub zero. Now the thing is, this is why we need the C time to keep track of the time, and the C standard library is allowing us to use S rand for our seed and rand for a random integer between zero and max int. So this actually sets up our uh, our time here, and I'm going to need a load balancer. So load balancer LB. 
So this is our create a load balancer because the load balancer is going to be doing all of the heavy lifting for us. Now I've already, actually I'm going to take care of this a little bit later on. So I've created a random number generator and now I need to create some random requests. So for int i gets zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus. And what I want to do is I want to add some random requests to our um, add request. So I'm gonna go ahead and say request r gets uh, create random request. And then I'm going to lb dot add request. Now I could combine it all in one step, that's, that's fine. It's not that big a thing. I need to create an array of web servers. So I'm gonna say uh, web server web array, which is going to be of size num web servers. Now, whenever I create an array like this, this is using the default constructor. Remember for our web server, we had two constructors. One was the default constructor, and then one is this constructor that allows us to specify the name of the server. But because the name of the server is private, we have to use this constructor in order to set that value. So once I've created this array, now I need to populate this array. I need to put web servers in here. So for int i gets zero, i is less than the number of web servers. I plus plus and then what we're going to do is we're going to create web servers and this web server is going to have some name to it now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a char and whatever I plus 65 is I'm gonna cast it as a char so remember that 65 is capital letter a 66 is capital letter B in Unicode and in ASCII as I goes from zero to whatever this number happens to be, the letters are gonna go from A to whatever the 10th or fifth or whatever letter of the alphabet is. And so that's gonna give each of these a name. And then I can say that web array sub I is going to get W. And then I can say, hey, web array sub i dot add request and I'm going to ask my load balancer to get a request and I'm going to ask my load balancer to get the time. So for these initial 10 requests that I put into the load balancer I'm taking off one of them and putting them in each of the web arrays, web servers at the very beginning. So this is the part here where I was starting off with the full queue. That was actually uh, this part up here. So let me cut this. This is where I was starting off with the full queue. Um, this every random amount of time we're going to get a new request. This actually is going to go inside of our loop down here. So I've created an array of web servers and now I need to loop. So while lb.getTime is less than let's say 10,000. Let's say it takes 10,000 of these time units to do everything that we're planning on doing. I need to check each web server and see if it's done. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the current time. And that's going to be lb.getTime, which should be a function. And then I'm going to ask each of my web in my web arrays, each of my web servers in my web array, if they're done. So if, and I'm going to say web array sub, uh, and I'm gonna make this cur time 
mod num web servers dot is request done with whatever the cur time is. And if that's true, then we're going to do stuff. So let me explain what I'm doing here. I'm setting it up so that I'm asking the array for one particular web server. And the thing is, I'm only going to check these one at a time. So I'm going to go to whoever's in box zero, and I'm going to ask them, are they done? And then I'm going to go to box one and say, are they done? And then I'm going to go to box two and say, are they done? Which is why in my web server, when I asked if it's done, I didn't make this just an equality. I made it greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to probably would be good. I said greater than or equal to. So this is actually going to check, each time it goes through this loop, it's going to check one web server. But it's going to check them in order. So the next time frame, it's going to check the next web server and so forth. So if it's done, then what I want to do is I want to ask it, what its web is. So web array sub cur time mod num web servers dot get request. So I'm actually going to get the request from the web server and I'm going to see out stuff. So I'm going to see out at whatever the current time is and then I'm going to ask the web server so that's cur time mod num web servers dot get name processed and I'm going to have to get the request that it is. So process request from whatever my IP address is, that would be r, r dot source to r dot destination at, actually I've already done the at cur time, so that's good, end line. So this is going to, every time it goes through, it's going to tell me if it's processed that. And then I need to get a new request. So I'm going to say web array, whatever cur time mod num web servers dot add request lb dot get request and her time. Now, that's where I'm giving it a new request. That's this comment that we had here. So if it's done, then we want to give it the new, next request in the queue. And then I also need to make sure that every random amount of time we're going to get a new request. So I need to see if we've got a random number of times. So I'm going to say if rand mod 10 is equal to zero. In other words, generate a random number. There's a one in 10 chance that I'm going to get a new request. So if that's true, then I want to uh, create a new request. So request r gets create random request. And then I want to lb.add request. And then, of course, every time I go through this loop, this is my test, so I need some type of iteration. So I'm going to have to say lb.inkTime. Now, <clears throat> the biggest point here that I really need to make, and it's very important because I made the mistake a lot, um, every time that I want to access the web element, this web server W, I actually have to use the full name here because if all I do is I get that web server out of there, I'm going to run into the issue of it's not actually the web server, it's a copy of the web server. 
and because it's a copy of the web server the changes won't hold so when I'm doing this web array dot get request and this web array dot add request here I'm having to do that because if I make a copy and I make changes to the copy the original web server in the web array won't change and so I won't actually get any new elements in there I won't actually take any elements out of there so all right so I'm going to save this and we're going to try and compile it and see what issues we have. This is load balancer main.cpp. All right, so let's see what we've got here. Um, it's expecting a semicolon. I don't know why I have a bracket there. So for this for loop, uh, where's the for loop? It's up here. I don't need that bracket there. And then it said, yeah, all this stuff has to do with that bracket. So let me save that and recompile. All right, I need a semicolon there. That would help. And then here, standard inline does not have a class type. Did I use namespace standard? I thought I did. Oh, period. Why do I have a period at the end? That should be a semicolon. All right, so let's save that and let's run this again. All right, so it says no faxing, no add request. Oh, if I'm going to add a request, I need to add a request R. That would be helpful. All right, excellent. So let's uh, do an output for load balancer main.exe. And let's run load balancer main. Okay, so let's look at what we've got here. So I'm going to scroll up to the top here. And so I can see at 21 B process, I should probably put a space in there. At time, I need a space in here. So it's going to process a request from this IP address to this IP address. And at 76, in other words, B ended up being the first one to process any requests and actually process two in a row before any other server does. Notice that all of these requests are different. And so what we've got here, let me save this, let me recompile this, and let me rerun it so we get the spacing a little bit better. But what we've got here is we've got a model of a load balancer, and this load balancer is going to go through web servers in a row, one at a time, Ask them if they're done with their current request, and if they're done with their current request, then it's going to give them another request. Now, if I want to change this, all I need to do is change this constant up at the top, where I've declared num servers as five. I could make this eight, and if I compile and run, then I'm going to have eight different web servers here. And keep in mind that I, I have eight different web servers here, I started off with 10 requests that were originally put into the queue. And then of course, basically every one out of 10 times I go through this loop, I'm adding another request. So I'm making sure that I have a lot of requests. I can probably change this to uh, one out of every 20, but I have to be careful that if I change that amount too much, I could run the risk of uh, trying to pop from an empty queue or trying to dequeue from an empty queue. So this is a very complicated program, but there were several aspects that I wanted to touch on here. Number one, the idea of a struct. A struct is a much simpler form of a class. I don't have to worry about public or private, and I don't have to worry about functions. So it's much more self-contained. It really is more of a record or a data element, one piece of memory that keeps all of these types together. Uh, the other thing that I want to talk about that's new here is this idea of a string stream. This idea that I can build a string together just by using the insertion operator, just as if this was a file or just outputting to the screen, and then getting the string as one tidy package. But I hope you learned a lot on this program. Once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.